but we're actually heading back over to Steve Stribble's house. Right. We haven't been over there for a while. No. And he said he's got a new project. Right. Well, he's always got another new project. He's a busy guy. <laughs> well, sadly, in a way, but not sadly. He's For years now, he's been dismantling his railroad. He's just repurposing it, though. That's it. Yeah, 40 years building it, and now uh, the last four years or so, taking it apart and turning it into pieces for other people's layouts and dioramas and and just fun stuff. Right, I know that feeling though, you get such joy in making something for someone else. And Steve is, uh, is an endless builder, he just likes to build the railroad. And the room got full, so he started taking it apart. Right. <laughs> and then he started building it again, and, and now he's taking it apart again, because he just likes to build stuff. Right. And this is his current project. It's a waterfront. Wow, look at that lighthouse. This is a diorama that I'm building for a guy that lives out in Vernal. And his wife is interested in having a wharf scene, so I've recycled a bunch of stuff that came from my layout and came from our dear friend Alan Badham, who has gone to the other side. And they are really excited about this. It's involved a lot of rebuilding and reconfiguring. Some of it's new, but most of it is reconfigured stuff. I could probably get a license for recycling. <laughs> <laughs> and for most of the time that he was building this railroad, uh, my friends and I would come up here every Sunday and just hang out and watch him build and, and occasionally run trains. Mm -hmm. But this wasn't a railroad that we ran much. It was just for Steve to build. And when you want to talk about a floor to ceiling railroad, oh, yeah. there's like nine, 10 foot ceilings in here. And look at that. I mean, we're talking floor to ceiling. <laughs> well, Steve's sure been an inspiration to all of us on building all of these little buildings. I know when I first saw them, I had to give it a try. Well, he's he's been such an inspiration to me. I. I would credit him with most of my building techniques in spite of the fact that he didn't really show me any building techniques, he just inspired me to do better. Right, exactly. And then you just go figure it out. Mm -hmm. And for all those years that we would come up here and, and play with the trains, we even rigged a GoPro camera in one of the trains. <laughs> but I got the biggest kick out of just filming the trains and taking pictures up here. Uh, it's just, it was just a fun place to come and hang out. Oh, no kidding. Every, every Sunday. Every Sunday, yeah. And, and sometimes on Saturday. He said he was going to take the railroad apart. Well, we first found out when we went over there to play trains and he'd torn a whole section of it out. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't tell anybody. But then all of those pieces he was tearing out, got, he started turning them into these dioramas. Which are so cool. And then it was a whole new reason to come over. Right. To see what in the heck he had built now. Right. <laughs> and that, of course, involved building even more stuff to add into the dioramas. I started dismantling it about three years ago, a 38-year project that needed to come to an end. <laughs> and I've sold off most of the bits and pieces and parts. I made two or three different dioramas. My daughter has one of them. My son has another one. Dale has one. Uh, some of them have gone to other people that they might get incorporated into their layouts. The train shop has a large diorama down at their store in, in West Jordan. 
I enjoy the building aspect more than anything. <laughs> once once they're built, then you kind of lose interest in them. You know, I liked my layout, but I really wasn't a big operator or you know, a runner or anything. It was just fun of building it for me was what was great. Well, you've certainly, how many, any guess on how many structures you've built over the years? Alan counted them up a number of years ago, and at the time there were about 260 that were either built by him or by me. Uh, probably 25% of them were built by him, and the rest were built by me. <laughs> wow. And uh, like so many modelers, especially guys that do this type of thing, the building is the fun aspect of it. Uh, the guy that does the Thunder Mesa down there, Dave Meek, he loves building stuff. Jason Jensen, the guy over in Colorado, he loves building structures and stuff with many, many others. To them, that's the fun part of the hobby. Now, you've built, it seems mostly structures, but this is just one of several ship models, right? Yeah, I've built two or three different ship models, and that's always been a fun thing to do. You know, I built a ship model back in the 1960s. Really? Yeah, I was just a teenager. But I'd sit in front of the TV watching Perry Mason and building the USS Constitution. Oh, my dad was trying to build the Cuddy Sark at one time. But you know, you get all these little knots and stringing this yeah. together. Yeah. Uh, when you undertake one of these things, you have no idea, but it's a whole different kind of modeling, oh, I'll tell you. Yeah, no kidding. And it's, uh, talk about lacing your shoes. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was building a plastic model. This is a completely wood plank on frame, and a lot of it is scratch built. But everything, all of the little pins are brass nails, and it's all held together. It's all wood, plank on frame wood construction. And they were built uh, with only half of the hull because they were intended always to be part of the railroad. So they're called a water line kit where uh, the bottom half of the hull is never actually constructed. Oh, wow. And I never build them as full hull models. When you're in the process of building it, you just don't build the bottom of it. Yeah, well, I love the, the copper plates and everything that you've done. Well, there. the copper plating was a lot of fun. You know, it's labor intensive. How'd you do the rivets? With a little uh, rivet tool, the little uh, pounce wheel riveting tool. Okay. Well, this is an Allen building that used to be on, I think it was the two foot gauge module that us guys built 30 years ago. I've got this old photograph here of the MRS railroad and you can see Al's building tucked down in there. It's got the White Rock ad on the side of it. And he was very proud of his White Rock advertising on there. But it's an amazing building, and it really looked great on the old MRS railroad. So it actually ended up on three different railroads and now on a diorama. This building was also on the two foot gauge model, and it was on the backdrop, and so that's why it's so thin. And that's the way I've set it up here on the backdrop. I added this little decorative facade at the top and then I punched a hole in it and put a door and put this little porch and steps on it. Other than that it's basically what it was when Alan had built it many many years ago. Now all that stuff ended up at the MRS Railroad too, right? Uh, this I know the cafe might, did. This one, yeah, was probably at the MRS layout. Uh, this building was always on my layout. It was mod I modified it. And this was part of it, but I've reconfigured it quite a bit. I've added the stairway and stuff, and I've added this, this little top part and added that skylight. The station was originally that... Alan built 
and I cut it in half and shortened it and then the little round area that Alan had on the station I built this lighthouse around it and then the top of the little round part that he had I reconfigured that into the top of the lighthouse. Sweet. The handrails are all brass that have been painted. The rock work is all made out of sculpt to mold. This this dock work and stuff is all recycled from my layout. Yep. And I remember making this stone wall here. Yep, that's that recycled that. too. A lot, of, a lot of recycling here. Mm -hmm. I bought one of those huge stone walls and then very carefully took the heat shrink packaging apart and kept the stone wall and then poured plaster into the heat shrink packaging mm -hmm. and just made up about 30 of those yeah. panels and cut some of them down and Whoa. that was a fun project. Whoa. Now I know that depot that Al built was based on some prototype. You would probably talk about some New England prototype. It was probably something on the Sandy River area, uh, but Waterville. Waterville, Wiscasca, and whatever. I can't remember all the things, but he loved the New England stuff. Yeah, and he was, he was really keen on doing an exact prototype. Yep, he was pretty close. I don't know whether he's rolling over in his grave because <laughs> I've cut his stuff apart and repurposed it, but at least the buildings live on it even if he well, didn't. As long as it stays out of a dumpster, I don't think anybody should be rolling yeah, over in that Yeah, and that grave. was the main thing. I, when I kicked the bucket, I don't want it to, didn't want it to end up in a dumpster. <laughs> well, this has been fun. It's always great to get caught up with Steve's projects. Oh, yeah, they're never-ending. And there'll be more of them. Oh, yeah. And so you would want to follow along with that. And so if, by chance, you're not a subscriber to the channel, please hit the upcoming subscribe button. Zip. Right there, that blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. We'll see you. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.